Hey all, welcome to a Tuts Plus screencast tutorial. My name is Sharon Millen and I'm going to show you how to create a quick sunset scene using primarily the Blend tool in Adobe Illustrator. I've started by creating a 600 by 600 pixel new document and naming it Sunset. Let's start by creating the gradient sky. Although the obvious process for creating this would be to use a gradient filled rectangle, I'm going to show you how to create a graduation of colour using the Blend tool. With the Rectangle tool, draw a dark blue filled rectangle over your entire artboard. Copy the rectangle and paste it in front. Using the Free Transform tool, reduce the height of the rectangle to about three quarters of the original size. Then fill this with a golden yellow. Copy and paste in front the golden yellow and then again using the free transform tool reduce the height to about two thirds of the previous shape. Fill this with a red orange. You'll now have three rectangles. So select all three and then using the blend tool which has the keyboard shortcut of W click the blue, then yellow, then red orange. This will create a gradient. If you've not got a gradient effect, double click on the Blend Tool icon in the toolbar. This will bring up the Blend Options window. Change the spacing to Smooth Colour and click on OK. This will then create a gradient effect. It's not quite looking like a sunset sky though. Thankfully, once you've made a blend, you can go into the Blend group in the Layers panel and modify it. So in the Layers panel, go into the Blend group and I'm going to change the middle rectangle, which is the golden yellow. I'm going to lighten this to a much paler shade. Then I'm going to use the free transform tool to reposition the heights of the rectangles. Not only can you edit the colours and shapes within a blend, you can also add and subtract shapes too. Let's alter the gradient by adding a fourth colour to this blend. In your blend group, again using the free transform tool, reduce the height of the original blue filled shape. While the blue filled shape is selected, copy and paste it in front. Select the bottommost rectangle and resize it to fill the artboard. Change this fill to a much darker blue. Now we have a blend which looks much more like sunset and sky. I'm going to name this layer sky and lock it for now. Let's create a new layer and name it sun. Even though your sky contains four shapes with four colours, you can use your eyedropper tool to pick out any colour from the blend. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to pick out a nice pale yellow with a hint of red orange in it for the next blend. So let's create the glow of the sun first. Using the ellipse tool, draw two circles, the second one smaller than the first. Then with the blend tool, click on both circles. OK, so you're not as impressed because you can't see any changes yet, but if you drill back into the Blend group, you can change the opacity of the first and largest circle to 0% in your transparency panel. Here we've effectively created a transparent radial gradient. Let's change the Blender mode of this to Overlay, and then with the Free Transform tool, change the dimensions of the shape to create a distortion in colour in our night sky. Let's create the actual sun now. Copy and paste your circular blend and change it back to a circle using the free transform tool. Then change the fill colour for both circles to a golden yellow and change the blending mode to colour dodge. Then with the free transform tool again increase the size of the smallest circle so the blend looks more like a circle with a soft glow around the edge. Now that the sun is created, let's go ahead and create a new layer for the sea. I'm going to use exactly the same method that I used for the sky to create the gradient for the sea. This time using the fill colours of a medium blue, a dark blue and a navy blue. Then use the blend tool to complete the blend gradient. As the sun is setting on the horizon, it would reflect light on the water. So go into the sun layer and duplicate the large ellipse blend and paste it in the sea layer. Then with the free transform tool, modify the dimensions to create a slim ellipse. Then align it over the sun and create the reflection. 
Let's now create some interest in the foreground. We're going to do some quick silhouettes here. So create a new layer and rename it foreground. With the pen tool, I've drawn a rough shape along the bottom of our scene. Don't worry about being the untidy here. You don't need to be a pen tool pro for this exercise. Fill it in with a navy blue. Let's create a tropical palm tree now. Using the rectangle tool, hold shift and alt to draw an even square. Then rotate it 45 degrees via the transform panel to create a diamond shape. Using the selection tool, hold alt and drag your diamond shape upwards. This will create a duplicate of your shape. Then select both shapes and click the blend tool on both shapes. You may get a long blended shape. Let's change the settings by double clicking on the blend tool icon again and changing the spacing to specified steps. Change the value then to about 6. You can preview the results before you commit by putting a tick in the preview box, then click on OK. I've then lined up the blend on our foreground. It's not all that interesting like this. Let's give the trunk a bit more of a curve without having to create another blend. With the pen tool, I've drawn a curved line. I've given it a white stroke so you can see it more clearly. Then select the curved line and your diamond blend and go up to Object, Blend, Replace Spine. When you create a blend, it assumes that you want to fill in the space in between the two shapes. This results in a straight line in the shortest distance possible. This straight line is the spine of your blend. By creating a new spine and replacing it, you can make your shapes travel along the new line. I've then gone into the layers panel and gone into the new blend group and modified the steps, the curve and the placement because you can do that with blends. Our palm tree now needs some leaves. So let's copy and paste one of the diamonds from the tree trunk. With the direct selection tool, drag one of the points inwards to create a V shape turned on its side. Then while holding Alt with the selection tool, Drag the shape to the right to duplicate it. Let's use the blend tool here and create a blend from these shapes. Then double click on the blend tool icon and change the specified steps to say 15. We have a leaf shape, but the tip of the leaf is empty. So with the direct selection tool, modify the points of the right V shape. Drag them into the center and watch the blend render on the fly to create a more realistic shaped leaf. Now select your leaf shape and let's turn it into a brush. That's right, you can turn a blend into a brush. No need to draw individual shapes, so that saves a lot of time. In the brushes panel, click on new brush, then select art brush and then click on OK. We're sticking with the default settings for this exercise. Then with the paintbrush tool, I'm going to draw our palm leaves coming from the end of our trunk. I'm not completely happy with our final composition, so I'm going to go back into the tree trunk blend and just modify the shapes. I'm going to decrease the square where the leaves are and increase the one at the base. I then went ahead and changed the specified steps value to create a more consistent blend. This then helps create a more tapered effect to the trunk. And then I'm done. The blend tool is a great tool to create quick and easy blends. This is just a simple illustration. Try experimenting with it yourself and see what you can achieve. Until next time, thanks for watching.